All right, welcome back. This is the second video in our model and interior scene series. And just as a quick recap, what we did last time, we imported this CAD drawing into our scene. And from there, we grabbed our spline tool, we drew and traced the outline of our room, both the exterior walls and the interior walls. Now, what do we wanna do with these? Uh, where we left off, we need to isolate the lines and then we're going to attach them together. So there's a few different ways to do that. I can um, select my lines with drawing a crossing box here. Okay, and this will just let me uh, select these two lines. And once they're selected, I can either go down here to my isolate tool, which is in the bottom bar. It's a square with the little square brackets around it. And I can click on that and you can see what happens. I can also hit Alt, Q on my keyboard, okay, and that will turn that on and off. Um, and then another way I can do it is make sure they're selected. So you do have to make sure they're selected. If the cross selection isn't working, you can turn that on up on top here. Um, you can select one hold control down, select the other one, and then you can isolate. You can also right click and go to isolate selection. All right, once those are isolated, what we want to do is we want to attach them together. So we're gonna do that in our modify panel, okay? Um, what we're gonna have to do is we're actually gonna have to only select one line now, because it won't give us the options if we have, still have both of them selected. They're both isolated, but we want to select one line. We're going to go over here into our modifier panel, and it's showing that we have the line selected. That's perfect. We want to open up our geometry pane. Okay, so if yours is minimized, open that up, expand it, and we are looking for the attach button. Okay, find the attach button. You're going to find that, and you're going to click on the second line and attach the second line to the first line. So now they are both highlighted or both white and they're attached, okay? Um, so that's complete. Once that's done, we're ready to extrude our walls. So I can switch my viewport here. I wanna go into my 3D viewport. Remember we can do that by, I'm going to restore my full viewport because right now I am in my top view. That gives me my quad windows. You can do this by leaving the other ones open, that's fine or you can just go here and maximize our viewport with Alt W and that will maximize our 3D viewport. Okay, so we're ready to extrude our walls. We're gonna do this by adding an extrude modifier onto our, our walls here. We still have the line selected and they're both attached. So that gives us two sections to do at the same time. I'm gonna pull down my modifier list, okay. And we are looking for just simple extrude. Okay, so here it is, alphabetical order under E. There's my extrusion. I'm gonna have to change this probably by default. It's, it's around one. Um, so it's gonna be very small. You're gonna go under parameters and let's change that to, uh, we're gonna change it to 300, which would be 300 centimeters, three meters. That's about 10 foot high ceilings. Those are nice and, nice and high walls, but that will give us plenty of room for our door frame openings, okay? What you can see is we're in uh, shaded mode and we can't see where we put those door frames. And uh, so we're gonna change our, sh our mode from sh default shading here in our viewport window. Let's pull this down and we're gonna change it to wireframe override. And that lets us see the door frames here. Okay, so what I wanna do is you notice that the door frames here, one and two, and then on the other wall, this is a big picture window, they're running from floor to ceiling. And we need to put in the cross members here, which represents the top of the door frame. And we're also gonna put in the header above the window. Uh, so to do that, we are going, I'm gonna turn my view around, okay? what we're going to do is we're going to add another modifier into our scene. So I'm going to pull my modifier list down 
and I want to find the modifier edit poly. So we're going to go back to E. I'm looking for edit poly. Okay, here's my edit poly. And what I want to do is I want to select these four lines. Okay. And what I'm thinking, hold on one sec, I want to do something like that. Um, I want to just grab these with my edge tool. So here's my edge tool. And da -da 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 -da. once they are, we grab that, we're going to grab my edge tool. They're selected. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to right click and I'm going to find the connect button. Okay. So we have the edit poly, which will let us edit this polygon which is all the different shapes inside of here, our 3D shape. What we're going to do is we highlighted these four door frames, and we are going to connect them now with the connect button. Okay, That let us draw new polygon lines from one side all the way across to the other. Now, obviously, these are not full height doors. What we want to do is we want to raise these up. The easiest way to raise this whole line up at the same time is right now I'm in edges. What I want to do, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit here, I want to grab and change from my edge tool for my selection to my vertex. Okay, And I could click on these one by one holding down the control key or holding down the control key I can draw a box across. And that shows that all eight of those uh, vertices or corners are selected. With that being selected, I can go and I can, what we want to do is we want to move those and transform them up. So I'm going to go select my move tool or hit W for your hotkey on your keyboard. And you could do it manually like this. That's fine but we want to move them up to 220. So I'm going to undo that. And I'm just going to go here in my transform box for my Z. That's my height right now. We can see they're set at 150 centimeters. We're going to do 220. And that's one of the advantages of using the vertex tool. If we had the edges, it won't let us do um, this absolute mode for transform it would only do it from our position and we would need to know our position okay so we wanted to do 220 for the door frames here now we're going to swing around to the windows and we're going to do the same thing on the window side okay so i'm going to change my view just a little bit and let's review the steps see if you got it i'm going to pivot so i can see both walls what I want to do is I want to select just this wall column here and then this one. Okay, so I'm going to go back to edge. I'm going to select one, two. I'm going to hold my control key down so I can add to my selection three, four. I'm going to right click. I'm going to find the connect key. That connected these with new polygons. I'm going to set my height now. I'm still in my move tool. And I want to set the height from my Z here. If it's not letting you get the absolute height, um, the problem is we're still in edge mode, so it won't let us type it in here. So I'm going to change this to vertex mode. Now I'm going to select my new vertexes, which is these four corners of the, it's going to be the top of my window. So one, two, if your view allows you to drag all the way across, that's fine. Make sure you don't, get the, the corner of this wall here. Um, otherwise, select those two, hold control, and select these two at the same time. Now we can change this to 260. And hit enter on your keyboard, and that will move the, the top of the window frame. All right, we're going to leave off here. This is just a quick uh, video to get our door frames and our polygons edited. And we will see you in the next video. Thanks for joining me and uh, stick around.